Hello everybody, welcome to Adventures in Natural Pharmacy. This is the Dr. Dan Wagner's show and you'll probably notice that I am not Dr. Dan Wagner. My name is Sven Hosford and I have been around the natural health and integrative medicine community for several years. You may know me from such magazines as Point of Light um, and if you're watching on our Google Hangout here at St. Clair where I am today you can uh, see a copy, me holding up a copy of that. Yeah, there it is. And um, I am reporting today from St. Clair, as I said. This is the home of the uh, integrative psychiatric practice of Dr. Safdar Chaudhry um, and a group of very talented integrative medicine professionals. So I'm here today to talk about what goes on here and what is happening in general within the integrative medicine community within Western Pennsylvania. Uh, there's a new magazine out there called Bridge to Light, which uh, I was um, happy to be involved with a little bit and helping to advise. And that's kind of taken the place of the old Point of Light, if you were a fan of that magazine. And we'll be talking this hour with Dr. Chaudhry, and we'll be talking about his new publication that we'll be doing uh, very shortly. That should be coming out in January. So coming up this hour, we'll also be talking about the Brain Health and Physical Wellness Conference that's going to be happening May 2nd. Uh, if you want to find out more about that, we'll be talking about that. And uh, coming up very shortly, I should be talking to Gene Haller uh, about the Keys to Living Expo, which will be coming up uh, March 29th and 30th. So one of the things I get often asked as I'm out about is, you know, where are all the integrative people and why don't we hear more about them? And so my task has been uh, really over the last few years to try to bring together as many of these people as possible to get them to work together, uh, to market themselves together. So I've been doing a lot here at St. Clair. And let me spell that for you too. St. Clair is a French word. Um, it's S apostrophe E C L A I R E R. Uh, Say Claire is a French word which means enlightened self with knowledge. And Dr. Chaudhry and staff uh, believe that is the best term to define what they do here. Um, it's an integrative psychiatric practice. Um, he does prescribe medicine when it's necessary. He also uh, bases his entire practice in mindfulness and uh, we'll be talking about that coming up. So lots of things happening. I know uh, Jean Haller should be calling in very soon and we can talk about her Keys to Living Expo. Uh, let me talk a little bit more about the conference that's coming up in May 2nd. Uh, we are at a live and working uh, practice and Dr. Chaudhry is with patients and he will be with us shortly. So uh, we have very, uh, some very fun speakers coming up for this conference. Um, one is going to be somebody you may Remember, uh, Dr. Louis Mel Madrona is going to be making his return to Pittsburgh. Uh, well, he comes back uh, fairly frequently, but he'll be back on May 2nd. And he'll be the keynote speaker at the Brain Health and Physical Wellness Conference, and that's going to be in Blairsville uh, at the Chestnut Ridge Inn on the Green. Uh, so mark your calendars for that. If you go to the St. Clair website, and again, that's S E C. L-A-I-R-E-R dot -E com, sayclair.com, uh, you can buy tickets right now. The tickets are $90, uh, and if you do the early bird, that's before March 1st, they're only $80. We will be uh, podcasting this live, and that will be, I believe, $50, or the early bird special, $40, and you can buy those tickets right now. So in that conference, we also have Tempa Duke Lama, who is the founder of the Omoling Bond Center over in Greenfield. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful place for spiritual resuscitation. Uh, uh, Tempa Lama is a uh, Buddhist Bon Lama, and his uh, duty station, as it were, is right here in Pittsburgh. Um, so he'll be speaking at the conference about mindfulness. Another very interesting speaker we'll have is Dr. Matthew Keener. Uh, Dr. Keener is a neuroscientist, he's a researcher, and he's also an entrepreneur. And uh, he'll be talking a lot about technology and how we can rewire the brain uh, 
uh, not just with technology, but with our thoughts. Very interesting. Uh, uh, Dr. Chaudhry has just joined us, and he's now uh, had a chance to look at your um, flyer for the expo. And um, uh, just just talk a little bit again about uh, you know the the importance of integrative medicine uh, into this whole big umbrella of, of what you're calling the keys to living expo. Well, I really think that um, it, it gives people an opportunity to look, integrative medicine is a way for people to really get help in taking care of themselves. And it's through uh, physicians like Dr. Chaudhry who are offering us the opportunity of something other than allopathic medicine when it is something that will work well in a person's life. Right. And so at the Expo, we're really intending to have all of this there, not just some of the more, um, I, I hate the word woo-woo, but you know what I mean by <laughs> that. But, the um, esoteric. <laughs> solid, good advice that's medically based but not necessarily the traditional pill you take to fix what might ail you. And I think integrative medicine is the answer to that. Right, right. Well, again, uh, this is the Keys to Living Expo, March 29th and 30th at the Monroeville Convention Center. Uh, do you, you, you will have a website, uh, or is that up yet, or you will have it pretty soon? Okay. Keystoolivingexpo.com. Okay. Yeah, we also take email on that website for anyone who's interested in possibly participating as a vendor or an exhibitor, um, and that's info at keystoolivingexpo.com, or you can contact me through Journeys. Great. And so, again, thank you, Jean. This is Jean Haller of uh, Journeys of Life in Shadyside, um, a, a nationally known uh, leader in the small business retail industry and producer of the Keys to Living Expo. Gene, thanks very much for being with us today. Thank you, son. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And again, we're, you're listening to Adventures in Natural Pharmacy, the Dr. Dan Wagner Show. Uh, we're streaming on khbradio.com. We are also live on our Google Plus and YouTube pages with Dr. Chaudhry of St. Clair. And again, uh, St. Clair is a French word, S apostrophe E-C-L-A-I-R-E-R. -E if you go to Clair.com and look around some, you'll, you'll see that we have uh, a, a whole lot of things up there in the interest of um, educating the public. Dr. Chaudhry, welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Let's uh, talk a little bit about your center here. How, how did you develop and, and what... Um, how did you become what you are now? Well, as uh, I was listening into the earlier uh, conversation the of uh, the gene, yeah. uh, the, uh, no matter what science we are looking at, that science has the limited uh, abilities to do whatever that is meant for. Um, so uh, for some uh, unknown reason, we had reduced the ways of healing just contained to hospitals and pharmacies, uh, that being one, but that is not the only place to find healing. Uh, so that becomes very apparent to any physician who has been in, in practice for a period of time, not when you're just fresh out of the practice uh, for, of, of medical school and or, or, or residencies. Uh, so because the more you're in the field, the more you struggle, the more you find challenges and you also see the limitations of the conventional medicine. And when you begin to see that, and also the hazards of com the, uh, the, uh, the conventional medicine. Well, I think they just uh, said uh, the last couple of days that the number one cause of accidental death in America today is pr prescription drugs. Prescription drugs, yes. And so the hazards, the addictions to pain medicines, the, uh, it was even in some place people were talking about even the schools, they were saying uh, they were doing some kind of an exercise to help people understand, you know, that the drug that your grandma is taking is not safe for you to take, but that's happening. And, and people are over-medicated um, and, and, and uh, under-aware uh, that, you know, these, these powerful medicines are very dangerous if not used appropriately. So that's the general, not to say that they are not useful, right. but they're overdone. overdone. In fact, there's a problem now with 
so many drugs are being thrown down the toilet and down the sink that we actually can get high from our drinking water almost. Isn't There's, that beautiful? So that's, yeah. the, that's a free way to get our medicine. <laughs> If you're looking so, for an antibiotic. So just drink tap water, water and, and, and all the all the forms of Tylenol. <laughs> <laughs> a soup, a soup of medicine. There you have it, straight from a doctor. Now you you are a psychiatrist. You you practice you have practiced traditional medicine, yes. and you've been slowly brought over to this side because um, uh, I you know I've been working with you now for a year. And I, I know your humility, and I know you're smart enough to, when you don't know something, say, let me explore that and let me find out, instead of just dismissing it as something you don't need to know about. And, and I think that attitude is how you've really uh, fleshed out and built out this place into what it is today. Yeah. So I would say it was more uh, uh, that open-mindedness that comes in time and also recognizing that our, our patients deserve the best of the possibilities out there. Right. And that those are not taught in regular medical schools and residency trainings. Uh, and that's okay. I mean, that awareness is very important for physicians. Uh, so I was first also uh, exposed to the possibility of even such as yoga for pain management and yoga for diabetes. And yoga, yoga for depression. For depression yeah. and sleep difficulties and all, all of the above. And I began to explore that. I said, hmm, that's very interesting, and it works. So, uh, And I would not do anything or suggest anything without even trying it myself. Uh, so that's really the thing, is you do practice all these things. Um, I know you have a policy here of no junk food in the, in the, in the whole office. How well is that, how is that going? <laughs> well, I used to be out. Uh, all our staff would, would hide their Pepsis and Cokes uh, and their candies because I used to go on a patrol for a doctor patrol to clean up their drawers and throw away their candies. I haven't done that because now I think I, I try to live by an example of not doing a um, uh, forceful but an invitational right. way of doing things. <laughs> Lead by example. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, you also even actually had somebody come out and clean up the kinds of cleaning products that you use to get them more environmentally healthy, make your, your whole living situation, uh, the whole work situation less toxic for absolutely. everybody. I mean, we are living a very toxic way of not only thinking. I mean, I mean, if I have to summarize, there are two really major things. We live in a toxic manner and we live in a toxic environment. Mm. And the toxic environment is all the chemicals we are using, all the things we are putting in our brain and in our bodies and our processed foods and whatnot, they cause problems. Yeah. Uh, toxic thinking comes from thinking and integrating all the bad news and items and traumas and, and really not allowing them to be healed. Mm. Uh, so if we are able to address both of these uh, areas of our living, one is the hardware, which is our body, other is our software, which is our brain and psyche. Mm. Uh, we can live in a more wiser, effective, and more joyful and playful manner. That's wonderful. Now let's talk about like some of the different... Well, first of all, let's just talk about what we call the kind of medicine that you practice here. I mean, we've been using terms like holistic and natural and alternative and complementary and functional medicine is a new one, integrative medicine, whole body, whole person, all of these things, all of these definitions of medicine require the patient, the person, the individual mm -hmm. to make lifestyle changes and choices. Okay. And so this term lifestyle medicine is kind of catching on and is now the term that you prefer to describe what you practice here. Is that correct? Yes. And so I have to go back to my own journey and then come back to the moment of uh, your question. Uh, so I would work in different hospitals. I had carried various pagers. I was eating at Wendy's, uh, sleeping at night later, and taking night calls. Uh, not a very happy physician, but yet had things in the bank and going to vacations. And so the, really the first awareness was, you know, that I had to change my own lifestyle um, and then and, and, and by sleeping on time, uh, not checking emails midnight and not carrying a pager uh, many, many times. And, and within that, because I, I, had lost the, I had lost the ability of enjoying my practices of healing others, and if you're not enjoying them, 
then becomes work, and that's not a very effective thing. So by changing, and also I was having physical symptoms. You know, I began to have GERD symptoms, and I don't, I didn't want to take medicine for that. So with that background, uh, shifting to recognizing I was not eating healthy, and I had to eat healthy, but then I had to find out what that means. Mm. Because in the present day marketing, uh, we have all these fancy names which may not be very healthy, but they look very healthy. And you could go to a grocery store and buy a whole lot of things that say natural and healthy and still not be not being very healthy. Like, you know, like Mountain Dew is not really Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> you mean it's not the dew from a mountain? <laughs> uh, so, so recognizing that, I also recognize if I as a physician did not know the various methodologies of living in a balanced manner, how could I expect others to do that? Mm. Uh, so I had to first come to terms and with that recognition. And with that, I began to then recognize, you know, that our, 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 our patients and our, their families, everyone really wants to live in good health, but they are living in fears. And, and, and thus the fears perpetuate more fearful, stressed out living behaviors. It really um, becomes a downward spiral. It absolutely is. And then, then people don't even see any way out. There's just uh, yes. no light at the end of the tunnel. They just see more tunnel. Absolutely. I just saw someone today, and her comments were exactly functioning, very young, vibrant, functioning woman, apparently. And these were her words. She goes, I'm like a dead soldier. Mm. She goes, I don't have a joy of my life. I do everything. I look very good. I, I appear to be cheerful and whatnot, but I'm a dead soldier. Mm. And, and, and at a young age to make that comment, and I see a lot of dead or numb soldiers. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and to get the joy back in her life, because it was all based on fears. Mm -hmm. So at C Clear, we have made it our, even though we started as a psychiatry practice and addiction practice, we, we have made it our, our goal to help people change their lifestyle because everything begins at a very, very emotional mm -hmm. level and a brain level. Now, I, I think there's a real important point here. When people, not associated or not affiliated with natural health or holistic health or anything, when they think of oh, yoga and nutrition and mindfulness and those sort of things, they think they're just kind of fringe and not very effective. Mm -hmm. And yet you have demonstrated with mm -hmm. the fact that you have been working with the very hardest of the hardcore cases and other psychiatrists actually send you their patients that they cannot help. And in general, your your patients are seeing progress yes, by very simple things. Um, so it's uh, I, I have to kind of uh, make a comment about other psychiatrists. If I was working in a system which would not allow me to integrate good good sciences, I may want to do them, but I may not be able to do right. them. Uh, and so particularly I, nutrition is good sciences right now. Nutrition is a good science. Uh, obviously, mindfulness is a great science. Yeah. So sometimes working in systems of care where the reimbursements are not there, people just do not integrate these sciences. So they literally don't have the tools. Yes. So our goal was to recognize that, uh, and that's why the C Clear became a place where we could implement some of these sciences without having to worry about the systems of care not allowing those things to happen. Yeah. And, and thus the ability for that to be demonstrating at a scientific level. Uh, just the other day, actually, just a couple of days ago, I had a, one of the, my patients. He came in and he just gave me a hug and said, I'm, I'm, today I'm leaving. He's not on any medicine. Hmm. And he said, um, I'm so very excited. You guys gave me my life back. Oh, isn't that great? Life does not come from a molecule. <laughs> <laughs> life comes from a, a balance of inner joy and whatnot. And a very young fellow, uh, and, and he just said, I just want to say hello to you and say thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, so, our, so when people are able to breathe better and eat better and sleep better and think better and, 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 and live a life of, uh, and have communities which support their goodness, uh, most people do very well. Uh, That's not wonderful. to say that uh, acute care such as broken bones and broken you know, jaws does not need treatment. We are not sure. debating that. Uh, but we also saying broken heart needs more than Prozac. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we're listening to uh, you're listening to Adventures in Natural Pharmacy, the Dr. Dan Wagner Show. My name is Sven Hosford. I'm sitting in today for Dan, who is in Las Vegas, being much warmer than we are here. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back with Dr. Chaudhry at Saint Clair and talk more about the conference and what goes on here at Saint Clair. 
Hey, welcome back to Adventures in Natural Pharmacy. This is Dr. Dan Wagner's show. I am Sven Hosford, formerly of Point of Light magazine, if you remember that back from a few years ago. Uh, and I am here today at St. Clair, which is a lifestyle medicine practice. Uh, that is, uh, the medical director here is Dr. Safdar Chaudhry, who is joining me, and we're talking about adventures in psychiatry, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Adventure is all over the wonderful world. <laughs> Exploring. <laughs> and uh, it, it, we have uh, one of the reasons that Dan wanted me to come on is to talk about all the different things that are happening in Western Pennsylvania. Um, it's kind of my mission in life to help organize um, uh, this this uh, group of um, somewhat independent-minded people. It's it's a bit like herding cats and. Sometimes it's a bit like herding, stampeding mountain lions. So, um, but uh, then, then I breathe, and then I do my yoga, and I eat some sprouts, <laughs> and things are much better. <laughs> you put a little glue, <laughs> and the cats live together hereafter very happily. So, uh, one of the things we want to talk about, we had uh, earlier this hour, we had Jean Haller on talking about her Keys to Living Expo, which is coming up in March. But uh, we have a very exciting expo coming up here. Um, this is called the Brain Health and Physical Wellness, a Lifestyle Medicine Conference, May 2nd, um, at the uh, Chestnut Ridge uh, Inn in Blairsville. This will be an all-day event. This is uh, primarily, uh, well, this is for both the public and uh, medical professionals, right? Anyone who is interested in health and joy. Anyone who's interested in health and joy. So, snidely whiplash, not so much, but um, <laughs> but we're really. I mean, it's a, it's a uh, for professionals. There will be CEs available, yeah. so there will be some accreditation. But this really is for family members and consumers, and uh, a couple of other things I think are interesting besides all the different kinds of medical professionals. But uh, you think that educators and law enforcement specialists would benefit from this conference as well? Can you talk about that? Yeah, so uh, if we recognize us as a community of people living on this earth, we really kind of divide ourselves into law enforcement or a teacher or a father or a husband or somebody who's driving the car. We all are people serving in various capacities. Increasingly, we are uh, marginalizing certain mental illnesses and certain conditions, and so our jails and prisons are full of people with addictions. Uh, they struggle to try to figure out how to support their needs there. And, and when people come out of those jails and prisons and other places, they cannot find a job because now they have a criminal background, quote unquote. Uh, so thus we are really marginalizing a large number of people uh, out, of our, out of our societal living. And, and it really all stems from basically mental illness or, or yes. conditions which could be treated through some sorts of therapies. Absolutely. So as, as the pendulum swung from uh, mental illnesses as being something that we wanted to treat and treatment facilities and were available, it became a very marginalized and the funding became almost minimal. Uh, we are quick to take care of a broken uh, heart problem such as a cardiovascular event, but if somebody is broken heart, as you know, this is not something we treat or we pay for. And thus the agonizing those things become alcoholism and it becomes drug use. I just saw someone today, uh, and these are real life people's examples, lost his mother in, uh, a few years ago and then began to experiment with drugs and, and now is uh, having ac actively psychotic symptoms out of drug, drug use. So, so our goal was to educate our law enforcement and educators so that they can understand these are not bad people. These are bad situations. Made bad choices. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and, and so people can have make back, may, may, may have bad habits or make choices, it doesn't mean they want to or they would want to perpetuate them. Mm -hmm. And it's so very important for us to assist the caregiving fabric, which includes our law enforcement folks. We're actually now working with someone who is in jail but coming in treatment for us, with us. And it's a very unique situation mm -hmm. where 
um, uh, you know, a person is actually getting treatment. It's almost like a, not a work release program, but a mental health release program. Hmm. A person is coming in for mental health treatment while he is in still, you know, in, in a jail like situation. And hmm. we're working to develop the programs for him so that his family understands, his, his, uh, his uh, law enforcement folks understand what needs to be done because they just do not know how mental illnesses behave, how addictions behave. So it's an educational uh, mission to educate those who are interfacing with increasing number of people with mental health and addictive difficulties. And that's really been, uh, you've made that a, a core part of your practice here is public education. Um, I've mentioned several times uh, the website here is seclair, S-E-C-L-A-I-R-E-R.com. Um, it's loaded up with lots of information. In fact, we have a whole YouTube channel uh, with, I think, hundreds now of videos. Um, every week uh, we do a, uh, an educational grand rounds, which is good for professionals and for the public. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about your commitment to public education on these topics. Yeah, so, so many, many years ago I, I actually was I have always enjoyed education. Uh, you and I are sitting with some knowledge in our brain because somebody educated us. Uh, somebody gave us that ability to learn and now we can talk. Uh, so, so it's imperative that we also give to others what others may need or may find it helpful. And in the, in the midst of all this uh, health crisis that we are having in our country, uh, which I believe is because of misdirected resources, we, 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 we are quick to fix um, uh, someone's bones and, and a short liver, but no one spends time to be able to make sure that their liver are already saved so that they don't have to need a liver transplant. And so part of that is an education for our policymakers so that they are able to shift the funding to more preventive care. Mm. Uh, part of that is uh, our mission to help an individual to understand that they really have the ability to get their health back. Yeah. And an and individual, it, it's yeah. not a card, an insurance card that will save you your health. It's not the money that you're going to put in your bank that will give you, quote, golden retirement, uh, the golden times. At that time, if your body cannot move, you don't have much gold. <laughs> and so our goal was to help people understand their best bank balances, their own health and healthy living. Yeah. And, and if they don't walk into their future without health, there's not a whole lot to celebrate. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the, uh, the keynote for our conference uh, is Dr. Louis Melmadrona. And uh, I was, uh, I've known Louis for, for many years, ever since he came to uh, Shadyside Hospital and became the medical director of their integrative medicine program. Uh, and then, of course, uh, then the hospital was acquired by UPMC and then it became a whole different story. So uh, Lewis is coming back and in, in a few years ago I was able to interview him for a movie. Uh, the movie was called Bethany's Story. It's a story of a girl who was paralyzed by a tetanus shot and uh, after three and a half years in a wheelchair healed herself uh, through raw food, just by eating a raw food diet. And so we, uh, I was involved with the filmmaking and we had an opportunity to film Lewis um, out at the Mesa uh, studio out in Burgettstown there. So let's play a little bit, a little clip. This is from uh, uh, Beth, this is actually, I don't know if this cut actually made it into the movie. This is from the uh, hour plus interview that I did with him. But this is a, a really good uh, question and answer. Uh, the, the, the question basically is what is the most misunderstood aspect of healing? What's the one most misunderstood or not understood aspect of healing in general? Not understood by the general public and or the medical community? I, I would say that um, it's not extraordinary that we all have the capacity um, to have amazing, miraculous change and that, um, and that we don't need magic potions 
um, mystical healers, um, exotic treatments, that, that it's really pretty ordinary and that anyone can do it. That really, that really is the, the, the hope of lifestyle medicine when you say that everybody can do it. Everybody has that capacity within themselves for extraordinary, miraculous changes in healing. Absolutely. It's really down to our DNA. Um, our, um, if we really kind of understand the human body, it really does not require a lot of fancy things. It needs some water, some sunshine, some clean food, and some clean people to live around. <laughs> <laughs> don't go anywhere near any of my relatives um, <laughs> down in the south. I have a lot of redneck relatives. Clean living is... is <laughs> and, and the body knows the rest. It really is very finely uh, made up of, of self-healing qualities. I mean, it cleans itself. You know, your kidneys clean yourself up. You know, they know what to do. I mean, you don't have to... We have to get out of the way our liver knows how to detoxify all this junk. No. Isn't that, that's really the thing, is just get the heck out of the way. Absolutely. And the arrogance, I think, a lot of people feel that's in a lot of modern medicine is the insistence that doctors have that they know what is right and they know the way and the only way. Absolutely. And, and that's, I think, partly, I mean, uh, I, mean I, I was actually stunned, I mean, having moved, migrated from Pakistan to here, uh, to see the importance of a godly like uh, you know role of a doctor and the hospitals and the pharmacies and I, I really had to get myself acquainted with why mm -hmm. um, and we we talked to our parents and God's wisdom and my mom knew a lot of things why I shouldn't be eating and doing and the local recipes that I had you know she had and I even now value them mm. um, and and then so we really kind of made it so very difficult that the healing or the understanding of living in health and wisdom is lies in a hospital. Actually, hospitals create more infections. Uh, more people get infection. I mean, somebody, and, and it's not a scientific comment, somebody said that uh, the chances of dying from getting getting hit by a truck is less than getting an infection in a hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that speaks for the kind of uh, cultivation of bugs and all these, and this is accurate, you know, CDC also has sent out this warning about all these super bugs, mm. you know, because we are over-treating infection-like conditions mm. by purely antibiotics, and the bugs are becoming more and more stranger and more difficult, and we really don't have tools to take care of the super bugs anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So these are over overdone antibiotic treatments, so our goal is to help people know probiotics lie in our food. And really, I think uh, that's a good point that, you know, a lot of people think of hospitals as the center of their health care, and really the center of their health care should be the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about, uh, I mean, you've been using nutrition now for a while as a part of your therapies here, and you teach good nutrition, but talk about what's happening in the traditional psychiatric world this connection, even just one connection between omega-3s and mental health. It's really changing traditional psychiatry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So we began to, actually it was out of my necessity, I, I knew that even, we'll pick up even vitamin D as an example, uh, uh, that it is, it's causing depression-like states. Um, and then obviously cardiologists began to think about, you know, how it's causing, and we knew, knew vitamin D from the perspective of, uh, you know, bone health and all that. It was such a different perspective and close to I would say 80% of the people that we check here uh, are, are, are low in vitamin D uh, mm. in, our, in our practice um, and these are people who may not even know and they come in as depression and uh, fatigue and this is and even during the summertime when just standing for five minutes in the sun gives you yes. tens of thousands of IUs of vitamin D yes so, so that goes back to the point that you just made um, how many of us are checking email then are in front of computer then living inside and how many actually go out for a sunshine yeah. you know? and and then I mean we had a for, uh, medical we had a, a physician assistant student from Costa Rica and she goes um, before they go out for work as a community 
they go out for sunshine. Mm. So they lay out for an hour in the sun before they go to work. <laughs> How many of us go to sunshine? Where, where can I get that job? <laughs> Well, let's start. Let's start to do that here at Saint Clair yes, yes, <laughs> in the yes. summer. <laughs> but it is important that the sunshine gives us that capacity to develop not only antidepressant abilities but also the vitamin D. And this is one example among thousands that we can talk about. And that's really important, I think, is we now have so much scientific validation for things. I mean, Paramahansa Yogananda, mm -hmm. the, uh, the autobiography, autobiography of a yogi author, uh, has said, you know, 10 minutes of sunshine is essential every day. Yes. And now we have the science backing up that says, yes, vitamin D or lack thereof is a cause of depression. And that's why we see this, this SAD, the Seasonal Affective Disorder. Absolutely. So, 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 so your point of, even if you pick up one item like this one, so nutrition as a whole has anti-cancer capacities, uh, healing, um, anti-infection -in capacities. I mean, you name it, making sure our guts are in a good place, you know, and then if you're eating a lot of fiber to get rid of a lot of toxins that we are exposed to without our permission in the air, water, and and, and then where earth and the foods that we might consume. So we have those uh, risks which are lurking around, but we also have the potential of trying to have a healthier way of living. Mm -hmm. uh, just the way the, the book Blue Zones talks about, um, I don't know if you, Sanjay, you have read the book Blue Zones. I know, I know of it, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Blue so, so it's not only a doom and gloom kind of a conversation, it's also a conversation about hope and excitement and right. exploration. Uh, and actually, becoming the guardian of the earth and the guardian of our homes and our yeah. families and our own health. Yeah. Uh, and in, in that spirit, the Blue Zone talks about people who live to be 100 years or more old, right. but have a quality of life. And in and, and, and the very end, we all can create a Blue Zone right here in Export, mm. Pennsylvania and on Mount Washington or <laughs> Mount Pleasant. It really doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a matter great of knowing how to. Yes, yeah. we really can. That's great, yeah. We have uh, a few minutes left with Adventures in Natural Pharmacy, uh, Dr. Dan Wagner's show. My name is Sven Hosford, filling in for Dan today. Uh, we're at St. Clair, which is a lifestyle medicine practice. Uh, medical director, Dr. Safdar Chaudhry, is sitting next to me. And we are actually in the group room here on a speakerphone. That's why it sounds a little bit hollow. Uh, we are, uh, Dr. Chaudhry and company, and many of us are actually involved in this, are producing a lifestyle medicine conference May 2nd. Uh, keynote speaker will be Dr. Louis Mel Madrona. You may remember him from his days here as medical director of the Shadyside Hospital's Integrative Medicine Unit. Let's play one more clip uh, that we have uh, from an interview I did with him uh, several years ago for a movie called Bethany's Story. Um, this is another clip. I don't believe this actually made it into the movie. Um, and this is Dr. Melmadrona talking about um, positive signs or any signs of change that he might see within the uh, traditional medical community. Um, I'm most optimistic that we'll have to change because we're going to run out of money. Because because it's just not sustainable what we're doing and we're gonna have to you know it's much cheaper <clears throat> much cheaper to start off with the corner acupuncturist than to start off with an MRI and if and if that guy can fix your problem with you then you don't need the MRI but in medicine we we always assume the worst so we get all the tests up front because we don't want to miss anything because then we'll be sued. So we spend a whole boatload of money for lots of simple common things that the corner acupuncturist could take care of. And so it's going to have to change because we can't afford. If, if we're going to have universal coverage, we can't do what we're doing. It's not possible. That's Dr. Louis Malmadrona uh, from an interview I did for the movie Bethany Story. Dr. Malmadrona is going to be our keynote speaker. So you're pretty excited about having him uh, show up here, aren't you? Yes, and, and I want to kind of uh, do make a comment. Uh, Sven has uh, uh, done a wonderful job of connecting some of the uh, leaders in, in the area of, of uh, integrative health care 
who have not only just a book knowledge of them, but they have lived the administrative difficulties and challenges and seen the evolution of healthcare in US. Uh, I just want to kind of, so I'm so very excited not only for, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Lois to be coming here, but also several of our local experts to join. Yeah, including us. Dr. Dan. Uh, Dan will be one of our speakers. Yeah. Uh, Betsy O'Neill. Betsy O'Neill from Allegheny General Hospital, the medical director of their, their integrated medicine program. We've got uh, Dr. Ted Sibick uh, from Inner Strength. Uh, the interesting thing about Ted Sibick, I think, is that he is super famous in San Francisco and Germany, and almost nobody knows who he is here in Pittsburgh. And he is just one of the most amazing yeah. traditional Chinese medicine practitioners, and martial artists, and all around swell guys. So I'm real excited that he's going to be there as well. And Janet McKee for Janet McKee. nutritional uh, element. So right. it'll be a very comprehensive one day. And also, um, I'm real excited about uh, Matt Keener. Yes. He is, I was at his uh, TED talk when they did the TED, TEDx Grand View, and he is such an interesting guy. Yeah. And he's he's this new generation. You said that he followed you around like a puppy when you were doing some, uh, some things there at Western Psych. Well, I would say he was the only one who had an interest in listening. <laughs> That's what I had to say. <laughs> what I had to say. Many other people had an apparent interest, but not necessarily wanted to spend more time right. having a conversation. But he's been keen. He's been very aware of yes. and very interested in, in integrative practices. Yes. And that's the new generation of, I think, healthcare physicians, who will shift this healthcare dynamic from a very expensive, redundant, malpractice worried system to a uh, more conscientious based uh, uh, awareness and, and self um, uh, propagating system. Um, and, and I think that's really the, the key is those lifestyle changes so that's what you practice here. And before we go let's talk a little bit about mindfulness. Mindfulness is really the, the core of everything. It all starts with being here now. You can't do anything or build upon anything unless you have that foundation of mindfulness. Yes, so that's why we will have a Lama coming in and doing right. the mindfulness piece, right. uh, another local hero, uh, but, but who stays anonymous, but very, very, very visible. Uh, so mindfulness is really a practice which allows our brain to have a balance uh, by cultivating uh, the ability to uh, stay focused, stay aware, but not become panic driven and live in fears. And it's really staying staying right with it, whatever it is that's yes. that's making you uncomfortable. Absolutely, absolutely. And these practices are as ancient as humankind is, and they're as powerful and as effective for the most profound conditions, even for depression, insomnia, um, post-traumatic stress disorders, eating disorders, addiction. So the applications are absolutely every human condition there is to be found. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and just living in health. And I just want to make one comment. Uh, sometimes we think as health are separate items. It's one integrity of the human body. Uh, so we sometimes separate diabetes and, and glaucoma and, and, and GERD and, and ulcerative colitis and cancer as separate items. They really are not. It's one body that requires good care. And that's really why you as a psychiatrist are maybe best suited for this kind of a practice where everything starts with the mind and Absolutely. mindfulness. Absolutely. It's a privilege. We really find that it's a privilege. Uh, we are seeing veterans, we are seeing folks who, who have severe difficulties and sometimes they're broke from not being able to take care of themselves and whatnot. And we try to provide them with simple, essential sometimes essential oils yeah. uh, treatment. Yeah, essential oils. Um, yeah. <laughs> which allowed them to really kind of regain their dignity, their respect, and their health, and obviously a sustainable health. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been listening to Adventures in Natural Pharmacy with Dr. Dan Wagner, uh, who was on vacation. My name is Sven Hosford, and uh, we've been here at St. Clair with Dr. Safdar Chaudhry. Um, you can find out more about the conference we've been talking about, the Brain Health and Physical Wellness Conference uh, at sayclair.com. And again, that's S-E-C-L-A-I-R-E-R. -E -R. There's an extra E-R at Say Clair. Those French people, they're always adding extra <laughs> syllables on the things there. So. They're just a bit more playful. Just <laughs> more playful. So Say Clair is a French word. It means uh, enlightening self through knowledge. Hopefully that's what we've had this hour. 
uh, with myself, Sven Hosford, sitting in for Dr. Dan. I give a big thanks to him for letting me do this. And I know you will be, he'll be back on the air next week with Adventures in Natural Pharmacy. So thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.